having trouble getting Cleveland, Walker and Wilson to go back on. It's gone watchdog. Might have to get a tech out there. And we've got Cleveland and Elizabeth back on. Thank you. So transport tools, I can confirm I can't turn Cleveland Street, Walker Street and Wilson Street, which is that one intersection back on. And we'll arrange for a technician to get out there. Okay. Thanks everybody for stopping by uh, again, or for the first time. Welcome if it's your first time here on the channel. Uh, look, what I've got here is the new, well, my new uh, scanner. Now I'm new to scanners, and this is the first one I've actually acquired. I used to be able to monitor the the New South Wales or the local police here in the, I guess, the Hunter region, New South Wales, uh, Australia. And I used to be able to do so on just my amateur gear, because I used to be on analog, but now most of the radio stuff, uh, as far as police and a lot of emergency stuff, have moved over to the New South Wales GRN, uh, Government Radio Network, I believe it's called. Uh, so unfortunately, the little uh, VX8DR there uh, is no good for monitoring those services anymore, and I quite enjoyed it. So I went out uh, and picked up the GRE PSR 500, uh, which I believe is the same as the Radio Shack. Uh, Pro 106 I think it is uh, now keep in mind I've only had this for 24 hours uh, so I'm certainly uh, no expert on the pro programming as such luckily when I grabbed this uh, scanner uh, it did did come pre-programmed uh, it's, it's a used unit so it come programmed uh, with a number of uh, GRN stuff programmed into it uh, South Australia, ACT, New South Wales, etc., etc., and some some other local stuff to the guy who was in South Australia who who sold it to me. Uh, got it off eBay, got a great deal. Um, got it for about two hundred and thirty odd dollars uh, posted, so I was really really happy with that, considering some of the price I'd seen going otherwise. Uh, and look, real real easy deal. Um, so thanks to the guy for that. Anyway, uh, getting back to it, um, what I'm doing is sitting here trying to program it myself for the first time. And based on general feedback from various websites, I've actually gone with the Win 500 program, uh, which I've got on my monitor there, as you can see. I'll just get rid of that light. So there's the Win 500. Now, what I did originally, so to avoid any stuff ups on my behalf, was to download the uh, all the program and uh, programming and stuff that was already done by the other uh, the other person, the previous owner. Uh, and I've stored that uh, just in case I, I really stuffed it up. So worst comes to worst, I could go back and, and re-upload that. Uh, what I've also done uh, is upgraded the firmware, uh, which is a piece of cake. Uh, I can recommend that. <coughs> just follow the instructions. Uh, now, what I actually want to show you is probably maybe a hint, a tip, or something along those lines, little things that I've figured out along the way which have helped me program uh, using Win 500. There's, there's not a heap of information. There's a bit of information out there on Google, uh, and uh, I think there's a Mr. Twister or something like that. He's got a couple of videos on how to program it by hand. But as far as programming it using Win 500, uh, there's a few things out there, but nothing that was covering some of the issues that I was encountering. So hopefully this uh, video will help you there, uh, and it's gonna make that a little bit easier. Okay, uh, so back to it. Sorry, I just uh, went and grabbed a tripod uh, hand holding. It wasn't really working too well. So what I'm doing, uh, when I'm programming in a new, say, conventional channel, uh, I was having a bit of an issue because I was actually, say, for example, I'd, I'd have, you know, scan list seven open there like that. I'd click up the top, as it said, and I would either go up here and go to edit and go new item at end, and I'd see nothing or the keyboard shortcut, you know, click on the header like it says. Um, and you can see here it says to create a conventional object, first click on the grid header above, next click new item at end uh, from the edit menu. Uh, so the shortcut also is uh, control shift and N. Nothing. I'm like, okay, okay. Uh, I've downloaded this as a, as a trial version. Uh, perhaps the trial version doesn't let me edit the software. Uh, you know, it's not going to let me add in new items. I went over and had a look at the, the Win 500 website and it uh, assures me that it's a fully functional version, uh, is a trial version for 30 days. 
Then I found some information on a website. Now, what you've actually got to do is go to all. And if you scroll down to the bottom here, and we'll just move that up hopefully so you can see it. So now we're down at the bottom, and what you're actually going to see is once I've selected all, you're actually going to see these two entries here, channel and channel. Uh, now those are the two entries that I've just tried to make. So let me just get rid of those. Luckily this is actually just the same as uh, using an Excel worksheet. So I'm going to highlight both of those, as you would an Excel worksheet. Right click and delete items. You can ask me if I'm sure, absolutely. Now we're going to try that again. Pop up the top, I'm going to go to edit, and I'm going to get a new item at end, and there's our channel. Uh, and you can go ahead and start editing as you want. Um, or alternatively, let me just get rid of that one. There we go, yeah. Uh, control, shift, and the letter N on the keyboard. Bang, there she goes. So if you're trying to program some uh, conventional channels, Make sure that you've got up the top show scan list all once you're under the conventional objects uh, tab. And you can start entering your different uh, frequencies or channels in there. So that's pretty much all there is uh, as far as conventional channels goes. Uh, just to show you how you associate those to a particular scan list. Uh, now when I do say conventional channels, um, <clears throat> typically uh, it's just a single frequency. Uh, it can be, most of the time it's gonna be your analog stuff. Okay, so that's about all there is to programming conventional channels. Now, if you're wondering what conventional channels are, they're pretty much just single frequencies. Majority of them are gonna be your analog stuff, so anything that you used to listen to on your analog radio, you're programming those in via your conventional objects tab. In this instance, though, you can see that one I've got highlighted, uh, entry 44, which is police local one. Now, that was an old, analog channel that I used to listen to, I don't recall whether it was the same frequency or not, but they have moved over to P25 and I knew there was one around because I'd heard it on one of the feeds on uh, broadcast IFI uh, and through the application uh, Radio Scanner Pro that I listened to on the Android phone. <laughs> so I knew there was still a channel that was around somewhere that was still broadcasting, albeit on digital, but unencrypted and, and that I should be able to pick up locally because the, the scan feed was coming from, from local, from Newcastle Scanner. So there it is on 469 meg, uh, decimal 2625. Now that is actually a P25 uh, uh, station, uh, broadcast, whatever your frequency, whatever you want to call it. So what I've done is actually just inserted that and left it as auto. And when the scanner picks it up, it decays the P25 and it works perfectly. Now over on the right hand side here, you can go through all of your individual objects uh, as, as far as your conventional stuff which I've still got up the top listed as all. Over on the right hand side you'll see which scan list that object is associated to and, and when it's object it just means all your individual items so as far as that object or that frequency at this point because I wasn't sure whether it was still working etc and, and all the other police frequencies that I found and, and programmed in below all of those I just chucked into my scan group, scan list 20. So I could actually just listen to those uh, and see whether they come through. So I'd have no other scan list activated, just scan that, that list 20. And then I could watch it and rather than scanning through everything else and keeping an eye out for when those ones popped up, I knew that those were the ones that were just gonna pop up and it was gonna scan nice and quick, so likely to catch some activity. And then as they come up, and I should have all those other ones here, locked out because they are all encrypted now. So I'm going to save that. Now additional to that, uh, I could just go and delete them, but what I've done is actually locked them out so if they actually come up on my other scans it'll lock those out and they won't actually come through on the on the radio. So how you change which scan list you want it to, to come through on, just highlight it just like that. Hang on, we'll go back up to that one. There we go. Go over to the right hand side here, there we go. And it's simple as just ticking a box. So that one you can see is ticked in 20. I can put it in multiple scan lists if I want, uh, or just have it in the one. So at this point I've got it highlighted as, as 20, uh, that sits on that scan list. And any if any replay stuff comes up, I have the LED, that light blue coming up, so I can actually tell what's actually being broadcast. So that's it. Uh, you can have alarms, uh, different things that go on like, like that, but I find that very annoying, especially if I'm laying in bed and I'm just listening. 
just temporarily I'm going to use the LEDs. I don't know whether I'll eventually turn those off as well. Anyway, that's pretty much it as far as your conventional stuff goes. I was going to show in some, throw in some torque systems as well, but at this point I'm going to make that a separate video because I think this one's getting long enough. 